Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Today let's gain appreciation for the Proco Rat, as chosen by my Patreon supporters. And close voting it was too. This was almost a video on the Little Big Muff. The Rat is an iconic hard clipping distortion which has been a staple of pedal boards since its introduction in the late 70s. This particular unit has pot codes dating it back to the latter part of 1988, making it only a few months older than I am. Although you can see from the rusted steel chassis that it's ageing a little better than me. Furthermore, this unit contains the much revered Motorola LM308 op amp, so this has all the classic rat mojo. Now, people often talk about these old components like the LM308 as if they're some sort of lost art of component technology, full of magic that simply can't be replicated by modern manufacturing techniques. And that simply isn't the case. The fact of the matter is that the LM308 was nothing special back in the 80s and was never designed to be used in audio applications. The datasheet suggests uses of amplifying signals for transducers and other sensors and was doubtless used extensively in these contexts. So it's inevitable that when compared to modern audio op amps, the Motorola chip fails spectacularly. But failing spectacularly is what gives this its unique sound, so it's worth discussing briefly what's going on so you can listen for these effects in the pedal. The first failure is frequency. The LM308 is slow compared to modern op amp chips. We're talking glacial here. The slow rate, which is effectively how quickly the chip can swing its voltage from negative to positive and vice versa, is about 40 times slower than what you find with a modern chip. This speed bottleneck means that the amplifier chip simply can't swing its voltage fast enough to recreate frequencies much above 5 kHz. Now, if we were amplifying low frequency transducer signals as the manufacturer intended, this wouldn't be an issue. However, any high frequency harmonic content in an audio signal simply won't pass through the chip. The second failure is gain. The LM308 can't amplify all frequencies to the same level. Lower frequencies can be amplified all the way up to the pedal's maximum, around a 67 decibel increase, but anything above 500 hertz has gradually less gain applied. The more gain we dial in, the less apparent the higher frequencies become, meaning that increasing the distortion also changes the tone. Both of these effects yield an interesting result. By being unable to properly amplify the entire audio spectrum, the rat doesn't have that unpleasant ice picked the skull fizz associated with other high gain distortion pedals as much of the high frequency content is killed in the op amp. It will get spitty, especially at high distortion levels when the op amp starts to collapse, but it'll never get fizzy. We're running this into the clean channel of the Engel Savage and capturing the sound from the Hofnein cabinet using Lewitt microphones. The guitars featured in this video are the PRS McCarty 594, the Fender Player Stratocaster and the Gibson Gothic Flying V.
This has got to be one of my favourite distortion pedals. It's thick and filthy with a spitting nastiness that's untamed if you push the distortion too far. Really reminds me of 80s rock and metal sounds. You saw me play a bit of Guns N' Roses and Skid Row and that's always what this pedal makes me think of. Now if you're looking for a slick, refined, modern metal tone, then walk on by. This is a classic stack-like snarl that breaks down under low notes and lots of gain, sort of like how a valve rectified amp will sag under duress. It's not a perfect sound, but that's exactly what makes it interesting. One of the best things I ever did was try running a compressor into the front end of the RAT. With just a little bit of compression on the input, it smooths out the distortion response and adds so much sustain. I love it for neck pickup, lead tones, and for making thick rock sounds out of the Strat. It's a really classy combination. I hope you could notice for all the quirks in the sound, there was never any high frequency fizz. The limitations of the LM308 chip just sweetened up the sound nicely. Now, I've got no idea how the modern equivalents compare as they're using more modern chips. They'll perhaps be a little more aggressive and less steps have been taken to mitigate the better performing op amps. If you want to grab yourself a modern rat to replicate any of the tones you've heard here, then there are Sweetwater and Toman affiliate links in the description and you can buy one there. I've even included product links for the hypergravity compressor if you want to double up on tones. Also remember to click all the buttons that you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, that's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Homie, get your rat out!